Hi everyone, I'm John Fenzel and I'm here in Normandy, France again, uh, specifically at the site of the Omaha Beach landings that occurred at 6.30 in the morning on June 6th, 1944, almost 75 years ago. Uh, we're in my car here because the winds are just absolutely crazy outside. You wouldn't be able to hear me otherwise, but you know, bloody Omaha is how most Americans who landed here that morning refer to it. It's the more easterly of the, the landing beaches, but Omaha was the critical beach that had to be taken for the D-Day invasion to be successful. And so I'm going to turn the camera here, and what you'll see is the beachfront right in front of us. And it extended about four miles all the way down. That's what constituted Omaha Beach. And it was here that the Allied invasion just came way, way too close to complete failure. And you can see the sculpture in front of us, and I'll show you another video um, that will give you a better view of that, but that's called The Brave, behind those people that are in front of us, behind the flagpoles. Um, but you know, um, thanks to the paratroopers and the rangers who scaled um, these cliffs and, and stormed these beaches, and their spirit and their grit and their determination, that day was won. And, and yet, what's really fascinating here, it was, it, it was really the entirely the efforts of these small units and even individuals who made the difference here. A lot of these units were made up of brothers and, and next door neighbors, and they were called PALS battalions. Their story was, was pretty much unknown until Steven Spielberg's film Saving Private Ryan came out. And you know, um, it, was, it, it was here then, on that morning, that uh, on June 6, 1945, that the 116th Infantry Regiment and the 16th Infantry Regiment of the 1st Infantry Division, the Big Red One, under the command of uh, Major General Clarence Hubner, landed right here. And they were all supported by two battleships, the USS Texas and the Arkansas, and two French and one British cruiser and 11 destroyers in all that bombarded this coast and this beachfront. The enemy they faced was the German 352nd Infantry Division and elements of the 716th Coastal uh, Defense Division, and all of those were under the command of Lieutenant General Dietrich Cross. Um, the plan of attack was, was incredibly detailed, admirably so. The, they had tight timelines and tight milestones and and it was a set piece plan that looked great on paper and it really briefed well 30 minutes to clear the beaches, successive waves of, of infantry to follow and 30 minute increments and enemy strongholds to be eliminated by 8.30 in the morning and then artillery that would follow right at that time as well. You know, it, it briefed so well that it really worried one general, General Sosabowski, who, who pointed at the elephant in the room and he said, look, this looks great, but what about the Germans? It was, a, it was a really compelling question because, in fact, the, the Nazis weren't about to cooperate, and nor was the weather. Um, it would be far worse for Forso because they didn't have a peninsula protecting them like they did down on, on Utah Beach, just down, down the coastline. So there was, there was no real shelter at sea. There was a lot of landing craft that got completely thrown off position, including the engineers who were charged with clearing all the obstacles that were on this beach right in front of us. And so um, you had 6,000 yards offshore, you had 29 floating tanks that were launched. The only problem is they didn't float and only two of them made it. And so instead they all went down to the bottom of the sea taking all of their crews tragically with them. The uh, the infantry were loaded down with 80 pounds of gear each and many of them drowned as well because they, they just couldn't get all of their gear off in time. So a lot of the amphibious craft uh, capsized because um, they were top heavy and so um, did the men that they were carrying. And, and before all of the others reached the shore, those infantrymen cramped, cold, seasick after three hours in the belly of these landing crafts suddenly found themselves under just absolutely withering machine gun and artillery fire. When the, when, the, when the ramps opened up, often far, far too early, it was just wholesale slaughter. Bodies were piling up on the ramps. And despite everything that was going wrong, though, despite a situation that now looked so desperate that General Omar Bradley, who was on board the USS Augusta, considered abandoning that effort and evacuating the beach head right here at Omaha. And by, but by the end of the day, D-Day, the Americans here, were on the cliffs, they were around the villages, and they were doing well.
Um, a lot of that was due to leadership at all levels. One of those leaders was uh, Brigadier General Norman C uh, Coda, the, the assistant commander of the 29th Division. He, uh, he was here on this beach and he was running back and forth, you know, giving out lots of orders, encouraging his men, completely oblivious to the artillery, machine gun, and sniper fire all around him, encouraging all of his soldiers who were huddled any place, you know, that they could possibly find for cover. But, but what they heard was him shouting at them, don't die on these beaches, die on the bluffs if you have to die. And so ultimately, Coda led the 175th Infantry and the 747th Tank Battalion in liberating the burning town of Assigny, which is right down the road, and, and we'll go down there here in a little bit. Um, but that's what linked Omaha Beach to Utah Beach, unifying the entire effort. And there's a plaque on a church that I'm going to try to find, and I'll post a little bit later. But, but General Coda received the Distinguished Service Cross for his leadership on D-Day, and I'll see if I can't uh, find and post that citation too. There's, there's a lot more to the story, of course, a lot more to this place. Um, a lot of brave men died right here 75 years ago. I'm John Fenzel and I'm here at Omaha Beach in, in Normandy, France, the, the site of the largest invasion the world has, has ever seen, ever known. It was the turning point of World War II. It was the longest day and I thought you'd like to know.